Hello, welcome back. Thanks for joining me here. I'm Arno Schmidt. We are playing the new standard format. It's been a while since I've been gone. I was on vacation with my two brothers and, you know, like, our flight back home got cancelled and we had to go back to Hamburg and then from there on the next day to Berlin. And then our train to Berlin was stuck in the middle of the, you know, railroad for three hours. It was a torturous way uh, of coming back home. So, yeah. Finally back, week is starting, and uh, here we have one of the successful decks out of the early, you know, uh, adventures tournaments in Standard. Um, this was a big Japanese tournament with more than 100 players, and this deck just won it all, ran the tables, went 10-0, and zero, and uh, yeah, so it, it's not playing that many new cards. The two big ones, actually it's free, but hey, let's talk about these two first. Uh, these two, which are Virtue of Loyalty, makes a 2-2 two -two knight on adventure, and then later on it's like this him effect that pumps your creatures every turn and untaps them. I mean, the 5-mana the enchantment is very powerful if you have a good board position, but 5-mana is a lot, but hey, you get both for one deal. And so I'm excited to try this one out, and then we have Questing Druid, which I already showcased to you in the uh, Team of Prowess video, which was very impressive there. And, uh, I mean, yeah, as, as long as you're playing a low amount of green cards, this card becomes more impressive. And, yeah, we are only playing one green card in this deck, which is the Questing Druid itself. So you're, you're good to go uh, at pumping this thing up. And then, of course, you're exiling two cards from your library, which is a little card advantage. And why is that nice? Because we're playing a Pia deck. We're basically a Boros Pia deck revolving around this card. This has already been a thing in Explorer and Pioneer. And, uh, yeah, you just exile... You have various ways of exiling cards um, and then playing them, right? That's the that's the theme here. We have Rance Resolve and Reckless Inputs doing the same thing. Very nice of Pia, creating Fobless every time we play one of those cards. And then we have Nahiri's Warcrafting, which also plays cards from Exile. We have Chandra, which can also play cards from Exile. And Adventure Spells that are put into Exile if you've cast a spell side first, right? The Source of your Instant. Um, and then when you cast the actual permanent then it will trigger Pia Nala. So that's where the synergy comes from. And yeah, the rest of the deck is, um, you know, Monster Swift Spear, just like in the uh, Pioneer version, we have a Prowess Creature here, uh, Torture Tower, also a new card, but I guess the other new card I want to mention is the rest is by Bivouac, Bi 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 I think, I don't know. <laughs> In any case, it's uh, it's a nice little man land. It's it's pretty good. Um, being a free free immediately and then growing uh, on the second attack, third attack, uh, even being able to pump other creatures is is pretty neat. Uh, I think this is one of the better man lands. Although most of the man lands actually look kind of decent in this set. And in any case, yeah. So uh, I just took the list. It's it's a bit low on lands. You might say twenty one is quite low. For a deck that uh, plays high cost cards. But I guess if you ignore the Chandra and you treat this as a two drop, this, the curve really starts at two mana. Eh, sorry, at four mana. And then with all the impulse, Rent Resolve, and Questing Druid, those 12 effects will, of course, dig you through your library and then make it easier to hit land drops. I really don't know what the Chandra is up. I mean, we have the Chandra light up the night combo here, I suppose. You can cop, you can play Chandra and then instantly play one of these impulses, which is pretty powerful. I mean, if you get to exile the top four cards and then you also find them Pia in the mix, play Pia first and then play the others. Perhaps that's what they wanted to go for. But of course, a six mana card is, seems a little bit out of place. Also, the one copy of Order of Frill Seeker, the one copy of Wandering Emperor. Just a little gimmicky. Maybe, maybe this was an open decklist tournament. I don't actually know. Um, so, yeah, in that case, you could, like, make people, you know, play around stuff or whatever. Also, one copy of Invasion of Uber card. Quite interesting. In any case, I, yeah, it went 10-0, so there's credibility to that. And, um, of course, it was an earlier standard turn right after the release. So, you know, can't take it super seriously. But, hey, um, it's a good way of trying some new cards, especially the Virtue of Loyalty, and seeing if uh, a Pia and a Ladex actually are the real deal in standard now. Talk about the sideboard real quick. It's it's a mix of things. We have knockout blows against Monored. We have more uh, cheap removal. We have Brotherhood's End as a sweeper choice. Woundbringer Valkyrie, another Monored hate card, pretty much. Uh, really hating on Monored. Another Chandra. 
uh, a curse of silence an invasion of Kubal Khan sort of uh, cards that disrupt big mana decks more or decks that rely on a certain spell in a case of curse of silence then we have Agatha's Soul Cauldron. You may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to activate abilities of creatures you control. And then creatures you control one with some have all activated abilities. So the synergy there is with Virtue of Loyalty, which puts counters on everything. And then, um, yeah, you have to, of course, also exile a card from a graveyard. And then if it's a creature card... It will basically give all your other creatures with one persona kind of these abilities. Um, but it's only activate the abilities, right? So in this deck specifically, I don't really see synergy. Um, I, I mean, what this also is fundamentally, it's just a graveyard interaction card, just like Unlicensed Services can just be used to, to uh, keep your opponent in check. If you have any other reason why it's good, let me know in the comments. I haven't really come up with a good reason um, for what it's for. I think it's just a new Graveyard Exile. It's just better than Unlicensed Hills pretty much because it can also pump your team at various points at instant speed. So, yeah, card is not bad. And, uh, yeah, down here we have a Lauren, some Enchantment Destruction, Artifact Destruction, and a Jaya. To also exile cards from the top of my library. Yeah, true. The minus one here. Actually, I mean, if I'd be playing a PNLR deck, I would probably go with the Jaya in the main deck because it also makes red monk prowess creatures. Prowess creatures are amazing with all the spells. And uh, yeah, I would probably play this and then just like lean to the ground, more burn spells, play with fire and all that. I think their version, also Kumano is excellent with Pia. So if I would build the deck, which I might in the future, um, I would build a lot different. Um, but yeah, for now, I'm going to try this version and see how it goes. And then we see from there. All right, guys, that was it for the intro. Let's play some magic. All right. Thanks for asking. Of course, I want to play first. Uh, zero lands, not bueno. This is fine. Um, hmm. so we can go Sundown Pass, Copperland Gorge. Maybe play Impulse, then turn free, play Pia. Interesting. Um, you put away here. I kind of don't want to put away the removal. I think it's just a good card. It's this. And then I go end of turn. Questing Druid, likely play P or play Land or something like that. I could also play P and now, Jetmir's Garden, and play like Wedding next turn. Could also hard cast Questing Druid. Sometimes you want to do that. If you know, if you really want to put on a clock, hard casting Questing Druid makes sense. All right. Cool. So, uh, I guess this means I can only play this for one turn. True. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so I have to I have to make a decision here. I have to decide if I want to get this or just get Pia down. Make a Fopter. And ignore this. For the time being. I think it's some weird deck. Um... I already have another one. I think I just want to get the Pia down. Yeah. Having a second one, I think, getting the Pia down is like, it's just a better play. Yeah, this card is great. I mean, it's it's already a neat, not not a bad card on raid. It gives all your fob this haste as well. Pretty amazing. Okay. I'm just going to go with this. And... Keep up the virtue, attack for one. Some sort of domain deck. Another virtue of persistence. Okay. Is um Zor, right? Zor kind of works with 
maybe over committing playing this, but uh, who cares? I don't I don't know if they have a sweeper. They might, but we're still gonna draw one card here. There's a uh, Zura right, which is kinda neat with these big enchantments. Um but yeah, I don't think my opponent's playing Zura. This this should make me just fodder, yes. Swing. I guess I shouldn't have swung with this, maybe. They don't even want. And untap everything. This also works then with mana creatures. So uh, for example, we have Katilda that makes mana for all gives all the humans mana. This is just a knight, so it's not a human, so there's not synergy there, but it could, I don't know, like maybe if you untap all your humans with Katilda in play, you can make a bunch of mana, use that mana for something. Something that uh, comes up. Beanstalk Worm, okay, wow. This one's probably dead. Um, I guess they are not quite dead yet. Can't create another fodder. Nope. Destroy evil is neat. Um, <laughs> here you can actually activate the bivouac with the trigger on the stack or before. And it also gets a counter. And untaps. So it also it costs one less that way. <laughs> and then uh, if, if you just play. Yeah, I mean, you can activate it with yourself, with itself. Um, if it's tapped, if it's untapped, you get an extra mana. Play a free free. That that I cannot attack with. But my two Fopters get the job done. They can play one Leyland Binding, one Aganjo on the Fopters, and then jump block. And then they still. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter. They still. The chump here, they're gonna they're gonna dealt the same amount of damage. Like they're gonna get dealt two more damage than they gain life, so they would die there as well. So they have to chump both. And that should do the trick. All right. One's uh. On a Traxa ring and then Bramble familiar with the seven mana option. I guess that's the deal here. Okay, big stuff. Uh, Lauren seems good. Um, Invasion of Gubakan, Curse of Silence. Perhaps Jaya. What do I not like? So they have the Bramble guy, so that I do want to kill. I feel like, ooh, what's going on? Oh, look, my cars are just disappearing. Is this a new bug? <laughs> I press on him too long. Oh man. Magic Arena, you never disappoint. Yeah, I can't. I, look, look, I dragged them and they just disappear. Great. Um, okay. Putting out some clunk. I like the Destroy Evil. Um, also have Flash Gorger in there. A bit of a wild brew. Maybe not too competitive. Is the one saying. Playing Chandra in his 21 land <laughs> deck. Yeah, yeah, the hypocrisy, the hypocrisy. I could play Jaya, just a nice Fred. Bit of a two for one. Same with Emperor, but Emperor is a bit less proactive, a bit more reactive. Uh, but then on the other hand, I don't really have cards I don't like. Maybe the Virtue. Bit, the deck is a bit uh, vulnerable to sweepers. I feel like the way it is. You have Invasion of Koba Khan, but you don't really have anything else. I mean, you do have Vetting, and like, you have a bunch of card draw and 2 for ones but if you put your stuff on the board, they could just buy time with, like, Sunfall. Um, yeah. So maybe you want more, more of that Invasion of Koba Khan. I mean, that card is just phenomenal. And also with the Fopters, it, it flips quickly. So, uh, pretty awesome card. You want to play Pia first, but I, I playing Pia first gives you more leeway, right? Because you can actually cast it. Like, if I cast this now, and then I hit another 2-drop in a land or something, I can really not get all the value. 
though. But if I play PFS, she's gonna kill Pia's. I don't think I don't think I wanna play PFS. I think I'm just gonna go with this. Sure. Get something on board. Scorcher. Kind of annoying here. Okay. I could wait with playing the land. Yeah. I think next turn I'm gonna go Pia and then go play the land. And then I play uh, Questing Druid in my own end step. Um, this way I get the Fopter from Pia. But I also uh, yeah, get the Questing Druid cards, right? Because if you do not... You can do this in your end step. I already mentioned this in the Team of Prowess video. Where you just... Uh, then, then you have time until your next end step. Okay, let's attack for... No, actually, I have more damage I can attack with. Hmm. All right. Wow, my opponent's playing. <laughs> Double black. Double white. Bramble familiar. Atraxa. All right, you got it. You have to put a stop, otherwise I think they just pass to the opposing opposing turn. All right, and there's the chain. There is the chain. Also green mana in case we want to cast this first. Yeah. If they don't kill my Pia, they're in trouble. Pretty amazing that a two drop just generates this this amount of value for free. I mean, two one ones, you would have to pay four mana to get all these cards in one card, right? That's original Piana La, uh, the first one. You would get a two two and like two Fopters for four mana. And here I only spend two mana. Look at this. This just goes off. That's crazy. Um, now I could play Virtue, make another fob that pump everything. It's just bananas. Um, but also, both options. I think my opponent might have another Emperor. I don't know what they have. They don't have removal, so they maybe have like some Atraxas. But it's turn five, so I don't need to care about a Traxxer yet. Next turn, I care about a Traxxer. I think, honestly, because I have such a stacked hand, I don't really care about this effect. Oh, shit. If they have Leyland Binding for that, it would be a little annoying. But I think if they have Leyland Binding, they would have already cast it. And getting this onto the battlefield and having the repeated, you know, advantage there is just... I'm going to two there... Base, not attack with the Pia, even though it will be untapped and theoretically. I just worry about a Gunge or Emperor or something like that. Risk my Pia. I'm gonna win by huge margins. I don't need like two damage. We're gonna win here. And this is this is just amazing. I mean we have this somewhat lean to the ground boros deck that just outvalues whatever five color pile my opponent has over there. I could go with Questing Druid first. I feel like I'm just gonna go. Like, I don't even know if I'm gonna play this Questing Druid this game. You you, you do want to play Questing Druid, like, the earliest possible, but I'm seeing a color, huh? What's going on? Wait, why didn't you play the Red Land? Huh? You need to play the Red Land, right? Oh, they're playing the combo, I see. Um, I guess I'll just make this expensive. Okay, so next turn I can... Can they kill my PR? No, they can't. They cannot. <laughs> oh, this is just too good to be true. Um, uh, they didn't attack there. Okay, so... I guess I will just... Play you. 
and um, could kill this with the minus two. You should fight everything with fire. And they can kill my guy though. Yeah, I don't want to have this in the graveyard actually because it's a seven drop for the cemetery. Okay, I'm just gonna attack this there and these face. And I mean, they already have virtue going. I mean, things get pretty stupid pretty quickly. Cycle it. All right. And now we have two virtues essentially. Oh, and you also get two. Huh? That makes that makes the Gubakan even better. I, I wasn't even thinking about that. That's, I mean, that makes it even stronger. Every battle is cast from XL, so it synergizes with PNLR. If they're more playable battles, then. I mean, this, this is likely the best one, especially for this archetype. Opponent had enough. Good showing so far. To be fair, my, I mean, the opponent didn't do much this game. Okay, interesting. I guess we have a proactive two drop with lands. It's a bit of a slow hand, though. That's the main issue I have with it. Just having all tap lands. And one and two means that we can't come. I don't know. I'm. I don't know. I feel somewhat inclined to to mulligan, but then on the other hand, it's, you know, it gets lands and spells. Oh, okay. Dread Knight. Jesus, how many slow lands are in this deck? Too many, maybe. It's, uh, okay, that's that's a bit of a yikes. A bit of a yikes. I guess what I have to do here is I have to. I'm not gonna let the Clissa just keep hitting me. I should have blocked first. That's safer. Take two. Ready night. Um, do I kill the Dread Knight? Do I want to do that? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do this first. Okay. And I'll arm land first. You can't even interact. Like, this is unpreventable. As is a land drop. The end! No! Alright, you got all my peers. The end. This is an interesting card. Certainly an interesting card. Exiling all of one important creatures from your opponent. Yeah, I think, I think I'm gonna... You're gonna see a little bit of this one. In standard. Maybe also in other formats. Virtue of loyalty. Cottage. These manlands, they are like this one is pretty pretty heavy hitting. Um it's kinda annoying also for my planeswalkers. Um how do I do this? I can't really I could plus to seven, but this is still seven damage. I would have to be a little careful. Chandra doesn't do a whole lot here, I feel like. Um, 
Yeah, I just play virtue. Get that going. Could play questing druid and that virtue. Play Chandra plus play questing druid. Good. Maybe maybe virtue. Getting the Chandra out is probably a good call. Might have another. They don't. They do have priority, so they probably have something. We have to win this fight. Oh right, right. I forgot about that. <laughs> I actually get T2 too, so this makes it a lot better. Uh, then... Just the Swifty attacks. It looks like they'll go for the first something. Okay. Alright, yeah, making two 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 stem. How, how, how did I forget about that? <laughs> okay, Tenacious Under... Oh, we got them both. The Dread Knight and the Underdog. And if I block the Dread Knight here... It's actually perfect for them, because they also use the two mana instantly. I think I just let it happen. I could jump block like this. Preserve some, some of the loyalty over there. Although every creature counts at this point, because of the virtue. Huh. Um, so they have Vigilance. I kind of want to clean up a little bit and start swinging. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... I could also produce mana. I could go up to 5, 7, 9 mana. But 9 mana doesn't do a whole lot. I can do this. Nah. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to... 3 and 3. And then really turn the corner here. Like if they keep activating... Uh, the Underdog and the Dread Knight, they're going to lose life, they're going to 9 here, I have 2 man lands. And now I have like a, an army of 3 threes. Next turn I can double activate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Chandra, I, I forgot about the Virtue, that that also works with the Chandra and copies, that's... We have like a lot of things that actually work for Chandra. Um, I think I like a braid. Oh my god, this bug is so annoying. Just this. Um, I think I like a braid because of Elissa. Love me a torch against uh, all these free twos that want to come back from the grave or whatever. Um, I think Invasion of Guba Khan is amazing. Not a bad card, by any means. Rival's good. Light up the night, not so sure about. And I mean, this is just, this is green, black creatures and removal, right? Pretty much. The Chandra. Then. Could be reasonable choices. Looking at this Frill Seeker, I'm not so sure about that one. It does. Maybe I, try, maybe I try Brother's Hand, although it is a bit of a non-bow, but if I have it in my opening hand um, and they go like 2-drop into Glissa, it's going to be amazing. It's a huge swing in my favor. But then on the other hand, if I have Pia out and all that, then... I'll try it. Maybe a little bit more removal could be useful. A cheap removal. Or the Warcrafting. And Warcrafting deals with everything. And works with PR. Yeah, I don't have removal, but the hand is good otherwise, so... I'm passing it up. Teaching. Interesting. What a card I would have... Bought off. Um, yeah, I think again, I just want to go with the virtue. 
teachings. Is that the two drop you want to go with? You already have like underdog and the moss. What does what does it synergize with? A trade. Theoretically, my creatures are better. Oh, this is amazing. You trade, you go for the throat for the one half of my card. That's awesome. Like, long term, my creatures are better because I can pump them with weddings and stuff. But I think it's, it's like, it's fine to just do it this way and try to, like, honestly, I think I might just be the controlling here with the better late game. Okay. That's fine by me. Interesting. So I can play the Virtue, theoretically. Or I can play Pia and Virtue. And then next turn play Virtue. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go with the Virtue now. Yeah, okay, maybe that's wrong. Do they? They, they don't have creatures, do they? So this cannot pump itself? Oh, non-creature is actually the pump. Okay. So it will be a 2-2 next. Back. A bit too many lands. Running 21, I mean, flooding will hardly happen all that often. God damn it. Now they're also going to see my hand. Information is not to be underestimated. His virtue of loyalty card is growing on me, I must say. Five mana is not that much. No pun intended. Okay, opponent. Click, click, click. Click, click, click. Get rid of them all. Four mana is a lot, so you have to accompany this one with cheap removal, but, you know, a couple, of the, like two DNs, one to two is probably all right for a black mid-range deck. Not crazy to do. You can exile a Traxa, you can exile, like, exiling a Traxa, though, after they've drawn, like, five cards. Maybe it works, Maybe it, maybe it's enough. But it could also just you know, lose to the other stuff they found or whatever. They will draw cards for each additional copy they have in hand, so can't really rip their hand apart either. In the, in the past, they didn't put that like downside on those cards. They just made it so yeah, if you had like two copies in hand, you just, you're just screwed. That's just how it is. The opponent doesn't even attack the two two. Okay. Lands. Oh well. Mirax. Mirax also good with virtue of loyalty. Turtle. Turtle and field of ruin, huh? You can activate this for one cheaper and have it be a 5-5. Five five. Oh my god. That's that's kind of stupid at this point. <laughs> one 5-5 five five to, to hold him down here. This is a 5-5, five five, but otherwise they cannot attack. Okay. Just that one. A lot. <laughs> ah, oh, this is lovely. Um. Okay. 
Yeah. I could attack. We're just gonna double block, it's not a good idea. Um, make a mana and then activate you. And activate you as well. No attacks. Oh, I realized something. I could have... Yeah, I punted there. I could have... Um, because I had two virtues, I could have activated um, one. And then with the second virtue trigger on the stack, after untapping, I could gain another mana and then I would have had a 4 4 blocker here, which is actually pretty huge because my opponent can now attack with everybody. And I guess they would have had Field of Rune in the end. But yeah, I mean, yeah, they had Field of Rune, so I guess it wouldn't have mattered much. But still, it, it, was, a, it was a misplay. Okay. They beat my 200 land draw. All right, that's magic sometimes. Probably taking too much damage at this point, and they have Field of Ruin, which they maybe should have used by now, honestly. Like, I don't know what their last card is, but well, maybe they're going to use it, huh? Like, you want to get the Field of Ruin back, don't you? It's going to enter tapped, so... You Field of Ruin run, and then... I don't know. That, that play was sus. I think we're all right. Hmm. That's six. Okay, am I alive somehow? I'm at eight. Probably not. Block this. Take. If they have a land, I'm dead. Otherwise, I go to one here. Okay, that also kills me if they return the underdog. You got me. A right, bunch of removal. Bunch of removal. Brotherhoods and looking better the more they show me. But maybe on the play it's a bit yeah. not necessary. Um maybe I want the soul cauldron against all these exiled stuff creatures. Although the, the the free two never goes to the bin. Right? It just always goes to the adventure zone. Um I think I just want like Planeswalker, it's just value. I mean looking at that last game you would think, oh yeah, I want to put a six mana Shandra into my deck because I have all these lands, right? But we're still a twenty one land deck. So that last game was completely out of the ordinary. Very, 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 very unlikely to happen. So you can't just go from like that data point to the conclusion that now I put the expensive card in my deck. Um, yeah, you shouldn't do that. Although it is tempting in a way, right? Because our brain works like that. Or at least my brain works like that. That I just want to... Oh, right. Yeah, I just want to... Right? I have so many lands. I had so many lands last game, so... Not a six mana card on my deck, right? Certainly a, a, an interesting archetype. But yeah, Kumano. Kumano also works. Like all these sagas work with Pia because they enter the battlefield from exile. When they flip into a creature, they are. Uh, they trigger a form to token. Okay. Yeah, being free colors, not that great, honestly. Similarly to the Prowess deck, doing all these slow lands sucks. Which, I think you're okay playing eight, eight uh, pain lands in this deck because it's so fast. Mm 
Just have a bunch of kill spells. Yeah, maybe 21 lands is correct. I mean, what's happening to me here? I'm just continuously flooding. Okay, well, let's play Reckless Impulse. Okay. Turtle. Feels good. Emperor has a pretty awkward card to play into this turtle here. I guess I could just stay back from my swift spear, try to double block. Yeah. Turtle just as a value card. Uh, green black makes somewhat sense. Steel Ruin. Steel Ruin got a lot stronger now. That's definitely. People are playing a bunch of manlands. Your opponent does not have a removal, I would assume, at this point. Play this first and play the resolve. Oh, they can actually activate Field of Rune for one less, right. Pretty neat. Perfect, okay. Um, yeah, just plus here. Play another land. Destroy the Shirred. Swing for nine, they had 13. They kill my samurai, which I don't think they have removal for. They can attack my emperor, sure, but... But they didn't want to activate... I think that's just a mistake. Why didn't you use your mana and kill at least one of these bivouacs, right? And then also, if you attack, you 100% have to do that. My opponent just not playing very, very well. Hmm, okay. But the individual card power level might be enough to get them across the finish line. No answer. Oh! Oh damn, I oversaw a play there that I could make. Oh, I overlooked it. Uh, I could have played my other peer and then play the second peer from Exile, get a Fopter out of the deal. And then I can pump up the Fopter of the Emperor. And then I have a 2 2, at least dealing them some damage. Ah, oh, goddammit, Anna. That was not very smart. Oh well. Now they go to 6. Oh wow. Just getting in there already. Everybody at that? Uh -huh. You had six? You have one card in hand? This is free for me to do, so I'm just gonna do this and see if they wanna build a rune or not. Four blocks. They do. I guess they get a food. That's the deal here, huh? Hmm, that's why they can allow themselves to be so reckless. I only have two, six. No, I have nine damage, actually. Oh. Where's my mountain? Next, though. Yeah. Uh, so they had six. They have one food, so they had nine. Um, I have bivouac, which is free damage. Four, five, seven, nine. Okay, I will take the damage. They have one blocker. They survive at one. 
No, they die. Right, they die. So, they have one removal, they die. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit reckless. I don't, I don't know why, why you needed to attack with everybody on my emperor there. Oh well, well. Alrighty. Yeah, I can work with this. I think what do you really want if you play a bunch of these? You want cheap cards. Just like in a team of prowess deck, right? You you just want cheap spells, one drops. So this deck plays four swift spears and uh, the, the shocks, but it's just not enough. I think if you want to build this deck, well, how I would build it, I would I would play a lot more of those type of effects. Um, yeah, I would I would play I would play play with fire. I would play uh, Kumano. Just have like sixteen one drops or something like that. I mean, red white, you technically have lots of one drops in white that are reasonable, right? The new mouse, for example, it also, when you cast it from. Doing. What are you doing? Do I just want to make a knight? I don't want to make a knight or do it. It also imports an exit. Just make a knight. Did think about the Bosage with the one Jet Miss Garden, so that's, that's some big brain stuff. But yeah, I think... Just more lean, more efficient. Um, really unfortunate you don't have the the fast land in these colors, the, in the Boros colors. That really does hurt. Um, usually, Boros is not the type of where you want to have a bunch of tap lands, right? Like Bivouac and. Same with Is it Prowess, right? Prowess also doesn't have um, fast land. This red green has. Red green, yeah. Maybe you can just play a mono red deck and don't even worry about the PR stuff and just play Questing Druid in a mono red deck. Maybe some other green card as well. I think it's another big mana. I think this is one of those times where I'm just gonna play Questing Druid. I have triple impulse I've had a bunch for days. I just want to fret. Mm, yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, the tracks on turn five here. Be scary. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna play another good. Although it doesn't pump my guy, but yeah, getting pressure onto the board is, is all I need here. Oh my god. That was utterly disgusting. Didn't play around that card, did I? Eh, I could have should have maybe played around that one. Yeah. Oof, that hurt. That hurt my feelings. Man, that was that was painful. What? Should have played around it too. Didn't make a land drop last turn. Maybe just sitting on the tracks over there. Not feeling too good about that game after that happened. I'll not ever make that mistake again, I can tell you that much. Alright. One's got the goodies. Tracks are hitting the fields. No, I heard migration. Oh, I 
actually did not... I was a bit fast there, but I did order them correctly. Thank God. All face. Go to 8, I guess. Not even worrying about the invasions. Let's see. Let's start with this. I can get my Pia back. I hit one drop plus. No. Then I could have gotten like one more from there. Oh, I forgot to attack with the Fopter, I guess. The Fopter could have attacked. So they have eight creatures, I have five blockers. It's not enough. It's exactly nine that comes through. Mm. Up the beanstalk. I see, I see. Just normal ramp. You got me. Yeah, that Archangel of Wrath turn, that was huge. Did not play around that card. Okay. Torch the Tower can go. Invasion and Curse come in. Lauren comes in. And that's it. Maybe the Emperor goes for Yaya. 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 I know, I know. Um, first, you get your damage. Chandra. Kind of weak to both Ossification and Leyland Binding. Not the biggest fan of Leyland Binding. Uh, sorry, Light Up the Night. But. Do they see any other card that is good? It's expensive. I mean. At least if you hit it with Impulse and you have a Pia out, you can just cast it for one mana and be efficient. You can make a fob and deal one damage. Wait, actually it doesn't even deal damage to the face. It would just be a fob for one mana, it's pretty bad. Um, just play Emperor. All right, I mean, now that I see that this archetype has a lot of potential, I almost feel like I could have worked on it more before just copy-pasting this list from the Japan thing. I mean, it, it went 10-0, so like, I was like, okay, there's probably something to it, but I feel like a lot, of, uh, a lot more improvements you can make to this. Hmm. I mean, it's just this. I go wrong, it's like double wedding and a two drop. Good. Hmm. So I'm gonna cast Wedding turn 3, turn 4, so this is turn 5. So I just wanna do this this turn, I think. Oh, they already have the Leyland build. Which is pretty good against my wedding. Oh wow, they're just using it instantly. I mean, if you wanna do that, sure. <laughs> You could have had a better target. Just saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if they, this is actually already a threat, an active threat if they have an invasion here. They need another land, to be fair, but that's not that difficult to achieve. Yeah, opponent's having pretty awesome draws here. Stomper turn 3, Leyland Binding turn 2. What you want to do with the ramp deck, for sure. 
Also has trample, right? No, just vigilance. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'll block. Okay. Three cards now. Yeah, this is like, I think if I would build this deck, I would probably just, I don't even know if I would play the Questing Druid in the end. I mean, card is not bad, but I'm not sure if it's worth the splash. Maybe it is. I mean, in the end, you can always just play the red side and then, um, but yeah, I think I would, I would play four Invasion of Guba Khan in the 75, at least, maybe not all. This one makes sense. I like that one. Vetting also makes sense. I mean, vetting is just a phenomenal card. Um, you could play the Restoration of a like, Ganjo theoretically. I mean, it returns Pia. If they kill Pia, you play Restoration and you can return Pia. That's kind of neat. I think I'm going to, before I do anything, do this and see what I find. If I find it, it's Destroy Evil. I'm probably just going to use that one. The issue is the tracks are right. I don't have an answer. Oh, so I probably should just double block. They've laid I'm buying for my betting. In that case, my hand is forced. I mean, the, the questing read also being a synergy with the PNLA, making a fob that when you cast it is, is pretty bad. Right? But probably you, you just splash for this card. But yeah, you, you would play long. Oh, I would play long. Okay, how do we do this? It would be nice to get the virtue out. I mean, it would I think. But I think it's just better to get... And again, here I could produce an extra fobter if I want to. And just throw away a Pia for a fobter. I mean, the fault is a, quite the threat. It's going to be a 2-2 two, 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 and then a 3-3. Three, three. I'll just do it. I should have played the land first. I, I dealt myself an unnecessary point of damage there. Land binding, speed storm. Okay, for this deck. Hmm. Very good with Leyland binding. Play the bear box. Oh, shit. No sweeper still. Yeah, as it stands, I'm just going to lose to this attraction. Huh? Okay, well, try to find a removal. Good start with the questing druid, maybe that's correct. No, I think now I'm going to. I guess. I'm... 
Although, if I hit lands with this, they're just gonna be gone. I also just play Virtue, but then I'm gonna exile the Virtue. This forces their hand. Nah, just keep digging. Those are both going to be exiled, unfortunately, but how it goes. But I can also protect the Traxa next turn. Yeah, this ain't great. This ain't great. Yeah, my opponent had very good draws in both these games, but this is like what 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 does Ram want to play against? It wants to play against a deck that's not super fast and that doesn't have counter spells. And this is exactly that type of deck. If we would be more streamlined, had more one drops, we might be already, you know, like opponent would be at four and stuff. But this is more of a mid rangey token version of PNR than like an aggressive deck. And at that point, you don't have counter magic. I didn't draw any invasion of Goba Khans. My opponent had like the perfect draw. Um, yeah, you, you lose those games. I jump with one, I will take seven. I'll take it. Okay. I mean, at least at least the tracks has gone, I guess. Fourteen, fourteen over there. Might not make it this turn, I guess. I think it's just gonna kill me. I would have jump blocked. Yeah, I guess I'm just dead. All right. All right. And here in the outro, instead of going over the deck again and talking about it, which, I don't know, kind of unnecessary, I felt like, uh, I'm going to just showcase you what I had in mind as a Boros Lina version of this archetype. A little bit more lower to the ground. Um, not exactly sure if you want to have this package of vetting announcement in a faster version of this deck. Maybe you just want another creature that synergizes in some way or another. Um, but yeah, Cheeky Mouse seems kind of nice as a cheap adventurer. And then uh, you're just two colors, you have play with fire, you have destroy you, which I think is a pretty good good card uh, all around right now. You know, Shieldred is you know still one of the most played cards and it also hits various enchantments like Wedding Announcement and so on. Um, yeah, so this is sort of what I would go with if I would play a more streamlined version. Um, because in the end, I mean, we went 2-1 with that 10-0 uh, list out of Japan, but I feel like there's a lot more you can uh, improve. You, there's just better builds of the archetype fundamentally. Um, not to say that, yeah, this the, the, deck, the deck was like bad, it wasn't, but um, I think there's, there's more you can do with this. And uh, yeah, this is what I wanted to leave you with. See you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.